The question of the incentives of bureaucrats that are created by the regulatory structure in agencies is a really interesting one because part of the answer is human nature. By human nature, I mean power abhors a vacuum. So if there's something an agency can do, people tend to go ahead and do it. One of the reasons agencies were created was to provide a reservoir of expertise on a given subject matter and use that expertise to regulate a certain kind of activity in our society or an industry, the energy industry, the finance industry, healthcare, environment. An agency itself is kind of defined by its objective. So the Environmental Protection Agency exists to help assure clean air and water. But what actually is done to try to achieve that objective is done through people, and the people are incentivized to pursue really their own policy goals rather than policy goals that are laid out by Congress to achieve those objectives in the way they think best. Regulators are not necessarily bad people who don't realize the consequences of their action. But if what they're told to do when they come to work every day is regulate and apply these standards, then they're going to do their jobs. They're stewards of an institution. The problem isn't really with the people in the regulatory bureaucracy. The power is in the institution themselves. Our whole government is set up with checks and balances. Well, the regulatory agencies and the administrative state don't have much of a check. The power of the political check that would typically exist isn't really there because there's very few people in Congress who would be willing to take on a whole administrative structure and program. The only thing a company or an individual can do really is go to court. Those agencies have accreted so much power in that expertise that the courts go, well, you know, I'm just a district judge with two law clerks. I can't figure out these scientific questions that EPA has to deal with. So I'm going to defer to their expertise on this particular question. And the Supreme Court, rightly or wrongly, has now enshrined that notion in our jurisprudence.